Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and today we're going to be taking a look at Naofumi, the first of the gacha collab units for Shield Hero. Now, Naofumi is a dark tank, which is definitely a rare sight, just having anything in dark that's not a damage dealer. But more important than that, he is a successful tank. And in Alchemist Code, tanks have always struggled with being useful because it didn't really matter how good your tank was if they just didn't get attacked and your squishy units got attacked instead. He is good at getting around that by drawing aggro in a way that's not a status effect, but just enemies target him. And that happens at the beginning of the battle, which is nice because if you don't have his max limit break memento, he's a little bit on the slow side, but he can get the aggro taken care of doesn't matter how fast enemies are and that can be very very handy so today we're going to look at him like we would any other unit review we're also i'm also going to showcase a little bit of the summoning that i did over the past week uh, i didn't want to make a single video for it because i thought it was kind of boring otherwise just something kind of improbable happened um and then i'm going to address what what i think about whether you should try to get him and we'll do that part first so first of all you might be wondering if you even could get him because the only banners available now aren't targeted towards him and the best way to get him was the guaranteed banner that already ended now if this is your first collab uh it's good to know that a lot of times during collabs they'll bring banners back in the last week to give you a chance to get units that you didn't get. So if you were in the camp of people that would like to get him, but maybe you didn't have enough gems, or you, you were on the fence and then realized how much you wanted him later, that kind of thing, there, there very likely could still be a chance for you to get him. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's just general rhythm of collabs. Now, is he a must-have unit? Uh, I would say he's pretty close but maybe not 100%. If you are, say you're like free to play, your gems are scarce, and you're still putting together uh, a good like kind of carry unit, you know, getting them maybe like uh, you want a really good limited unit, like say soul or hopefully not narrow, rest in peace your gems if, if you want narrow. But say, say you wanted somebody, or maybe like Zengi, somebody who's like Louise shop available, you just want to save up for getting them and their memento or, you know, maybe Eliza, something like that, I would prioritize them first because having a good, strong carry that just, like, wipes the floor with enemies damage-wise, the I think that's your priority because if you don't have any, if you're not very, like, able at, at doing damage well, then Naofumi won't bring as much utility. Like, you might make your units harder to kill, but if you're having a hard time killing the enemies then I don't think that would be as productive. Now, if you are satisfied with your damage, though, then I would say definitely he's much closer to being a must-have unit because of just how good he is at taking the heat off of your other units, and he can really protect those squishy damage dealers like your Bashinis or your Zengis, either by drawing aggro or by literally giving them like an extra... 5k shield and then he himself is, is pretty close to being invincible so i yeah i definitely definitely good maybe not for everyone but i i could see more people than not really benefiting from his kit um yeah so let's take a, a quick break from the naofumi related stuff and just take a look at some of the summoning. Uh, I guess before we get to it, I'll, I'll say I did the, the Grand Summon on New Year's Eve for the three limited mementos. Because when I saw that that was that day only, I thought, one, okay, either this banner is 100% bait. And they're going to bring something crazy, crazy good on New Year's Day. Or they're just going to have something that's not that great on a New Year's Day like one of those hundred memento or unit summons and that was what happened so it was a little, a little bit of a risk um but I, I think it was it was worth it i, I always like the more guaranteed results because like it, you can have a really high theoretical ceiling on a summon but if most of the time you just get something like all right then then that's not so great but 
three limited mementos, even if you get like a couple of, you know, it's like, it's unlikely you would get three duds. And then I also ended up doing the enlightenment banner because I'm at the point where I'm missing enough limited units that when those banners are cheap, I, you know, I'll do, you know, maybe two to four steps every once in a while. Uh, but it totally depends on, you know, what, what's available, what, what the roster is like. Oh, and then um, about the memento. So I don't, I don't have it yet. I am planning on doing that summon on Thursday because I, I hit like the 12 K marker for gems spent and it's very, I don't plan on spending another 12 K to get to the next milestone. So I'd rather just hold off on spending gems until presumably there's another gem spent bonus next week. Cause it seems like they've been doing it every week for the collab. But yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that about, about summons. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and take a look at that. Okay, so yeah, this is the summon that I was talking about. And then right off the bat, there's a downloading. So I'm thinking like, all right, that could be cool. I'm just like, I just want like one good result and I'd be happy. But yeah, not too many chances to get like that many limited things at once. Because normally you get one guaranteed limited and that's all you get. First up, Minario. Do not have Minario. So that was not as great. And then we have Eliza. Also don't have Eliza. So at this point, I'm wondering, like, am I going to go like three for three of limited memento mementos for units that I don't have? And the answer is no. So I did already have a copy of that, but that's my second copy of that. And I love the VCR from this memento. So, um... So yeah, that, that was pretty good. You know, not not the most amazing result, but that was just paid gems that uh, built up from the pact over the past few months. So I felt it was worth it. All right, then I'll showcase uh, just one of the steps because the other three were just all duds. But I'll take a look at that. Okay, so this was a couple of days later. Uh, I was just trying to get to that final bit of the gem spent bonus so I could get those collab coins for uh, so I can buy more Raftalia shards. So I transmuted her. So, you know, I, I didn't have any particular high hopes. The, the, I think this was three out of four, and one, two, and four were all kind of duds rolls. But then this one comes along, and then just all of a sudden, bam. I, I'm not like super excited or anything. It is the first time I pulled a Genesis unit from one of those types of banners. I, I Screenshot. <laughs> um, I was just surprised that I got both him and his memento in like in such short order. Because that's not something that I've really experienced much. Normally like one of them is a pain to get. But... Um, yeah, I guess Adelaide is the only other one. So I guess Slothstein Genesis that aren't named I Icona, I guess. I don't know. That's uh, that was just what I want to showcase. Just something hilariously improbable happened. And Aruba. Okay, so yeah. Now let's go take a look at Naofumi on the unit screen. Alright, and here we are at Naofumi's screen. So as you can see... His offensive stats are basically nothing, and his defensive stats are super insane, uh, thus showcasing his tankiness. So for abilities, in general, I like to have him set up like this. Now, it should be noted that he does have Merchant as one of his jobs, so you could always switch out the basic for the trading skill if you need the Veil. That definitely could be handy in some circumstances. Just uh, remember, with if, unless you're boosting his agility with, uh, say, his gate two, which does bring it up to 176 from like what I had before. Uh, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But he's not the fastest unit, so if you have a faster veiling option, like say Jin, and you don't need like the all around you AOE, like he might not be the best for that. And he's got really good skills on his sub, including his big shield. So for general usage, um, I would say for sure use his just full kit. Uh, however, if 
you don't for the first turn need the beginning of the battle aggro drawing, then his gate two is pretty good. Because you'll get him faster and and tankier. I'll read the description. Yeah, so it's max HP, P defense, agility, and it raises jump by two. So you got mobility, you got speed, you got all, all the things that he would want. Which, again, yeah, it is a pretty big P defense boost as well. So that definitely could be useful. I do find the the taunt at the beginning is really good too. So, I, it, you know, you have options, which is nice. There's no, there's no one way to run him. He's a versatile unit. Like, you probably wouldn't use much from the Beastmaster aside from Gate 2. But otherwise, otherwise, pretty good options. For gear, he has his own that is from the you know, the EX level that you farm, it's sort of similar to that shield from the POTK raid, where you get 100 of each defensive stat, as well as single target res. And then you also get a weapon art that is a P defense scaling move, that, but it does lower your defensive stats for three turns after you use it, so you might want to try to use it as a finisher, or, you know, be otherwise prepared to deal with the, the lack of defensive stats that you would get. Pretty good gear. Other than that, the things that he's going to want, of course, are going to be more speed. Um, and then also just survivability stuff. I gave him the regen earrings because, you know, he's a tank. Makes him more invincible. And then I've been running him with the Wonder Chrono and having him quicken himself and whoever else needs quicken the most at the beginning of a battle. And then that helps mitigate his speed issue while still getting the taunt at the very beginning. But, you know, you, you can't go wrong with just HP or speed or jewels obtained or any kind of, like, elemental res. It's not, um, like, not super important to have one fixed set of gears. He's got options. Uh, for mementos, uh, there's the one with him and Raftalia, the one that I'm going to get on Thursday. Uh, in the meantime, I was just running him with the Templar group skill, so I just popped a Templar memento nobody else was using onto him and that's why he's got that uh, if you don't have or don't plan on getting the memento specifically for him and you're not running him in a group skill for whatever reason um a super budget option is this grand guy of summoners because you at least can get some extra m defense out of it so it's you know it's it's not great but it is higher than zero in its in its contribution all right, uh, let's move on to the Enlightenment screen. So I have him almost fully enlightened. This is about as good as I want to get him. I pretty much dry on all the shards that I could get for free. I didn't use any otherworldly shards on him. So these were all obtained via the quest that you can do for a week from the, from the box event, from the free tickets. I never bought any from the Louis shop or anything, so... It was pretty pretty good budget option to get him raised up. I know some of that you won't be able to do anymore um, after this week because that, that quest is going away. But if you haven't finished the box event, there's another 25 there. And if you really, really do want to enlighten him, then you can also use the otherworldly shards. I don't totally recommend that. I think you'd be better off saving those shards for like a heavy damage dealer like Raftalia. <laughs> But, you know, it's something you could do. As far as priorities for gates go, I 100% would get gate 5 first. Because it um, that move, that is white eye heal, where he gives himself a shield and gets jewel regen, it makes the shield way stronger. And that's nice because you can substitute attacking, you still get some jewels out of it. Presumably he'll get attacked and he gets jewels that way as well. Uh, and then he takes... Z almost no damage as a result. So I would 100% get um, gate 5 first. Gate 6, getting 4 ticks of that is good because he's a tank and tanks 1 HP. Um, for gate 2, it I would prioritize it after those, most likely. It is good, especially if you're not planning on using the taunt, just to give him more raw ability, for sure. And then after that, I would do the, the stat gates. And then um, 
I don't think his leader skill is worth going after either. Because it's good to have defense and all that. But I, I, I'm usually running him either with Zengi's leader skill or with uh, Soul's Memento leader skill for the Templars. So that that's not one that I, I would see people using too much. Unless he just really, really needed that damage mitigation. But usually, usually it's better to do more damage. So yeah, next let's uh, take a look at some of his abilities. Uh, we saw some of them in the video from the intro uh, using like his aggro drawing and I used this white eye heal, which is the gate five version of his shield and um, you, as well as his, his, let's actually take note of his most offensive ability because it is pretty handy sometimes because it's a non-type attack that increases in power according to his P defense and inflicts disable heal curse. So that is just great. Uh, I know I, I might have mentioned that before about how disable heal is one of the best status effects to apply because almost nobody's immune to it. And then it's a curse on top of it. But um, next up, I'm going to show just a quick montage of some of his moves. Chimera Viper Shield will pull an enemy towards you and poison them if they're vulnerable to it. It's also Pierce type damage, but that generally speaking doesn't matter. Usually it's relocating and the CC that make it valuable. Shooting Star Shield will make a grid that makes any ally standing on it have a higher area attack res. Nothing too amazing, but if you're going to be all standing in a group together anyway, it can be good to have. So Shield Prison is kind of a weird one. You can inflict a bind on an opponent, and while it's active, it will lower all of their attacks, but also increase their slash, pierce, and missile res. So it's got an upside and a downside. You can use it if you really need to lower an attack, or just keep an enemy in place. If you're using a different damage type than those, then you're totally fine. So Hate Reaction will do the exact same thing that the Taunt of the Shield Hero ability will do at the beginning of a battle. So it's just good for in longer battles, once it's worn off, you can reapply it. But otherwise, it's the same gimmick as before. An Orange Balloon Throw will inflict a 3 turn stun on an enemy. So that is just amazing. Assuming that they're susceptible to it because then you can just wail on them and not have to worry about reactions and all that And then he also has a move uh, capacity rise which will raise all of his stats on a cast time But that you know, it's good to have especially if you're gonna use the burning curse heal or his weapon art after that And then this is me realizing that I don't have his gear equipped in this battle So let's go ahead and switch to a battle where he does have it equipped Alright, so I did describe it earlier, another P-Defense scaling move, but before I show it off, I'm using that move I mentioned, Capacity Rise, just to get his stats up, and I just want to showcase the damage. Uh, without his Memento and Snowball and all that, it's, it's nothing too amazing, but you could use it to kill a particularly annoying enemy, something like that. Maybe he's the closest one to the final enemy in a battle or something, and they've got a sliver of health left. It'll it'll get the job done. I'm just comparing it to the, the burning move. But yeah, otherwise that is it for the video. So let's watch this animation, and I will see you all next time.